Last week in Celebrity Chef East vs West, Nick and David headed to Shunda in Guangdong Province, where the local dish selected for their cook-off proved to be a real challenge for them both. What is this? Oh, it ties to my eggs! This is crazy, it's always like this! Nope. Get your paws out of my pen. In the end, one of them received scores that put him ahead of his competition. Congratulations, Nick. You won't swim the lake of competition. I'm really happy. It might not seem like it, but I'm really happy. It's anyone's game now. Bring it on. We're now in Manila. I'm very excited. I've not been here before. I'm very interested to see what's in the cuisine, and I'm only two points ahead. In Macau, I lost by one point. In Shinda, I lost by one point. I'm only down by two. I feel confident. I feel it's mine to win. Chefs, Mabuhai, and welcome to Manila, Philippines. David, Nick, it's a pleasure to meet you both. My name is Bruce Lim. Born and bred in America, Chef Bruce Lim graduated from the prestigious Le Cordon Bleu in London and even received training under Gordon Ramsay. While taking a break in the Philippines, he ended up moving here and opening his own restaurants. This bubbly Filipino Chinese even started a TV career here and is now a familiar face in Asia. Chefs, welcome to Fort Santiago. This historical landmark is a must-see attraction when you're visiting Manila's historical walled city of Intramuros. Today is the third leg of your competition, and tomorrow you continue your culinary cook-off, which will pit East against West. Not only will the ultimate winner earn bragging rights to culinary supremacy, he will also walk away with a big check to the charity of his choice. As you know, you'll be cooking based on a local specialty that I have chosen for you. You will be given a stipulated time during which you have to source your ingredients, cook your dish, and plate up. You'll be judged on presentation, flavor of the dish, and how close your dish is to the authentic one. And of course, creativity, which means how you put your own spin to the dish. Chef Nick, your total accumulative score is 46, and Chef David, you're at 44. But it's still anyone's game. And Chef David, this is your chance to catch up. But today is not competition day. Chefs, I'm gonna take you around the city of Manila. We're gonna taste some food, get some feel, get some flavor, so you guys get inspired for your cook-off tomorrow. Come on. Let's do it. All right. Colonized by the Spaniards for over 300 years, the Philippines has unsurprisingly retained some reminders of its former rulers. Manila is a city of mixed reviews. It's infamous for its traffic congestions, yet the capital of the Philippines was also once hailed as the Pearl of the Orient. So this is San Agustin Church. It is the oldest church in the Philippines, and it was built during the Spanish colonial period. It's over 450 years old, and it's recognized as uh, UNESCO's World Heritage Site, which is pretty dang awesome. Yeah, stunning. But fellas, I'm spotting something over here that I think you should try. And it is a must eat when you guys go to the Philippines. Great. All right. More fun in the Philippines. There you go. Yep. <laughs> we call this balut. Balut? Balut. Balut. So you just give it a whack. It gives a little pocket. See? I got two eyes looking at me. Just drink it, bro. I'll try anything once. You got some balls, man. Like, I was gonna pass, but then I got David Rocco, you know, munching down embryos beside me. What the hell yeah. am I gonna do? Here you go. You thought chicken feet was bad, huh? You got beaks and eyes and, like, claws here. My little embryo's still inside. Oh. So it's just like, it's like eating oyster, man. Bottoms up. So what do I do? You eat the whole thing, man. Do it. Just for you, man. I see Nick trying it. Well, I got a man up. I'm gonna try it. He's not gonna outdo me. Ooh! You had to slip it in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
This thing just creeped me out. Slurping that embryo, that beak, those eyes all the way down was just not fun. Chefs, that was awesome that you guys tried this. I'm proud of you both. But I see a restaurant called Mitre. Let's go inside and grab a real meal. I'm you getting serious? over this. Yeah. Okay, real meal. So what are the effects of those embryos? Well, they say it has like an aphrodisiac effect to you. Nick? So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a soup. This is a lemongrass chicken soup. This is something kind of like Spanish. This is a chuete or anato oil. So the flavor profiles of uh, Philippines would be? Would definitely be sweet, salty, and sour. I think this is um, quite similar to the uh, Thai tom yum. This is really the first time I can say I've had authentic Filipino food. You can really tell that there's been this influence of the West in Filipino cooking. I'm feeling really inspired. It's funny because all these four dishes are so different mm -hmm. in a way, right? They look oh. almost you know, related, but then they're so different. So chefs, I hope that you guys are really getting the feel for the cuisine, you know, getting excited for feeling what Philippines is about, because the competition is coming up and you guys got a lot of cooking to do tomorrow. I don't think the dish will be blind tasting is anywhere on this table. So it could be something like Lishuan or adobo that are very iconic in Philippines. I'm starting to get used to blind tasting a little, but still, you know, every different dish can throw you off. So that worries me a lot. To me, this is a battle with myself. I really got to step it up and I got to win this thing. Welcome to Paco Park. This was built during the Spanish colonial era. Chefs, as you can see in front of you, there are two clutches and two blindfolds. And as you should know by now, you do not get to see the dish. You're gonna to have to pick apart the dish, figure out what ingredients were being used, and conceptualize and get your creativity going. Chefs, are you ready? Ready as ever. Ready, chef. Please put on the blindfolds. Hey, David, you realize today there are two spoons? Yes, sir. Maybe they like to eat their rice with a spoon. I don't know, maybe so. Chefs, you may taste the dish. Siniga. Sinigang, a national dish of the Philippines, is basically composed of tamarind, green chilies, tomatoes, onions, and a protein which can either be pork, fish, beef, or chicken. Vegetables such as okra, taro, radish, and eggplant may also be added. Often eaten with rice, this appetizing sour stew is refreshing and a perfect match for the humid tropics. Chef Nick is really taking it in. It's very, very fragrant and it's very distinct. So I picked up a lot of aromas. Chef David, I can see those creative juices rolling. It tastes like one of my grandma's soups. I'm telling you, man, this might hit home. When David keeps saying that it's very similar to his grandmother's dish, that kind of worried me because I didn't, you know, I didn't have anything to relate to. And you got some um, duck embryo in there. Oh. You felt some hair and some beak, right? The claws right in between your teeth. <laughs> I just had a prawn, it's a little, I know, I had skin and all, <laughs> so maybe it was the beak instead of the prawn. <laughs> I'm tasting it and I'm thinking, I can do this. This recipe, this leg of the competition is mine to lose. Okay, chefs, are you guys done dissecting that dish? <laughs> yes, chef. Actually, I'm quite enjoying it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there you go. So just pardon me, I'm just gonna close up the dishes. Okay, chefs, please remove the blindfolds. Was that like a, a fight on the senses? Was that really it was inspiring it's always fascinating to eat with a blindfold. Yes, very fascinating. There, there was a lot in there. Yeah. So chefs, you'll be given two hours to shop for the ingredients. Two hours. Yeah, man. Cook the dish and plate it. Including travel time and shopping time? Yes. You know Manila has the worst traffic in the world. I think we can work something out. <laughs> <laughs> Chef David, again, I think this city could be your time to catch up or even take the lead. The first two challenges, I know I won on flavor. This is Manila. This is about homey food, comfort food, simple food. I'm gonna beat Nick on this one, and I can't wait to see the look on his face. Chef Nick, you gotta do what you can to stop him. Yes, Chef. Are you guys ready? Yes, Chef. Your time starts now. I did it. Coming up, Nick and David are off to get their ingredients. Do you have mussels? Yeah, can I have a couple handfuls, please? No more. 
No more. They will then make their own version of sinigang, the comfort food of the Filipinos. David, you smell that? I just smell my wine, buddy. It smells like I'm gonna kick your butt. Chef David, you're two points behind. Yes. What are you gonna do now? Previously, tastes like one of my grandma's soups. You'll be given two hours to shop for the ingredients, cook the dish, and plate it. Your time starts now. But it. I'm in a rush, but Nick's in a rush, and we're both in the same situation. The traffic jams can get pretty bad here. We only have two hours, including travel time and shopping time. I have no idea what David's going to cook today. I heard something about his grandmother's recipe. That kind of threw me off a bit. My strategy with all markets is just to try to zone in on where I can get most of my stuff and stay there. Last two legs, no one's speaking English. This market in Manila, everyone speaks English. I'm feeling comfortable and I'm not feeling all frazzled. Do you have mussels? Yeah, can I have a couple handfuls, please? Where do I get the fish? Fish over there, sir. Over there, huh? Go, go. Handfuls, go. Go. Where are tiger prawns? No more. No more. Ma'am. Ma'am, I'm in a rush. Okay, okay. Thank you. Perfect. I'll take a couple of these. No, no, not all. Just two handfuls, sir. I quickly found my three main ingredients. Prawns, mussels, and squid. I'm feeling really good. Very clean, very fresh. Here, how much is it? 100, eh? Here you go. So I, I need to give you a list. I find a vegetable stall that seems to have everything, and I'm looking around, and I see Nick leaving the market. That little... The guy's like a jackrabbit. What's this for? For Sinigang. Yeah, that's what I'm making. That's soup, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take Since the time limit is down to two hours, every minute counts. So I thought I would start peeling the shrimps in the car. Green chili, uh, red chili, and limes. Beautiful. Okay. That's it. Good job, Nick. Looks like you're early again. I just want to remind you, you have one hour and 15 minutes to cook and plate. Yes, Chef. Where's David? When I left, he was still at the, uh, the fish station, so... <laughs> Give me a big yeah. hug, sweetheart. Okay, mate. Oh, Thank you're awesome. you. God bless. Nice to meet you, Thank sir. you, honey. Go, 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 go. Thanks. Let's go. So what'd you get, man? I got a lot of veggies and I got a lot of prawns. And that's pretty much it. I got a milkfish. Oh, nice. Uh, really inspired by uh, the lunch you took us to yesterday. I like fusing a lot of uh, different flavors into one dish. So I want to do tempura. Maybe do a simple beer batter and do the mung bean kimchi gochujang with a tom yum soup with some tempura vegetables. Oh, hey, look who decided to show up. What'd you do? Did you like take a nice, happy, leisurely stroll around the market? I get back to the kitchen and Nick's already there. I mean, he's already cooking. Oh, Chef David, I just want to remind you, man, you're two points behind, but I know you got this, so I'm gonna wish you luck. You have about one hour and 10 minutes left. Nick, how is it that you're always first to the race? The market is just a market. The market is just a market, come on. I see where they're all, you know, consolidated and then I just pick that one lady and say, hey, I want everything here. Chefs, I'd like to introduce you to our guest judges. To my right, I have Maureen Wobowitz. She is the winner of Asia's Next Top Model, Cycle 5. Maureen's German and Filipino heritage gives her familiarity to Eastern and Western cuisine. And this girl knows her local food. So chefs, you better watch out. To my left is chef and restaurateur, Bruce Ricketts. He studied in California and he honed his skills in many restaurants in the States before returning home and opening tons of successful restaurants. He's also known for having a very exquisite palate. So this is gonna be a tough judge to please. Chef David, what is that? I'm making a uh, fish broth. No paste, all natural. How do you say grandma in uh, Tagalog? Lola. Lola. Lola, just like Lola would make it. These guys look like they're hip, they're kind of worldly, and you know, doing the kind of Filipino grandma's recipe is maybe not the right approach. Time is 44 minutes. Ooh. Chef Nick, how's your confidence level now? I'm never confident. Never confident? I'll never say it's okay. I mean, there's always something that can be better. That's You're a perfectionist, me. my friend. You can already see the Southeast Asian influence that's coming in off this side versus for him, the way he's starting it out, cooking off the mussels with white wine and extracting that flavor. You know, it's very Western in terms of technique. Time, please. You have 30 minutes remaining. David, you smell that? I just smell my wine, buddy. It smells like I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> 
You guys like it spicy? Yeah. So I'll just put two. Put one more for good measure. Uh, not too spicy. <laughs> okay. Too spicy, uh-uh. Did you know that typically nowadays, a lot of the younger chefs bring that old school forgotten classic back. It's existed in a lot of provinces where they substitute tomatoes with watermelon for their sinigang, and it really works well, man. Well, hearing Chef Bruce say that the modern chefs use a lot of watermelons and sinigang really, you know, made my day because that was just totally pure instinct. Time, please. There are 15 minutes remaining. Chef David, Chef Nick is already plating up. Bro, you gotta put the pedal to the metal. Chef, respectfully, I'm not worried about me plating first or how his looks. It's about taste, flavor, and that's what I'm gonna stick to. Chef David, please keep in mind, presentation still counts. Yes, Chef. The plating of this dish is actually quite fun. It's all about balance. The greens, the reds, the oranges has to be in good proportion and ratio. So it's always fun to try to not shake your hands and, and, and put everything together and, and have some height. I want to get some height on this one. Come on guys, pick up the pace. We're running out of time. We've got five minutes left. You guys got to push. So Chef Nick, what are you doing to this? Well, I'm trying to cool the... Uh the broth because I'm trying to do a chop che inspiration because I was very inspired by the lunch he took us to yesterday and, and told us how uh, diversified and multicultural, you know, Philippine cuisine is. Yeah. So why don't we bring more flavors in? I'm realizing I can't do much more. The soup needs to kind of cool down just a little bit so the flavors meld and it becomes more intense. Chef David, you might just catch up. How are you doing, David? I'm plating, buddy. I'm plating. It's like, what the hell? Oh, damn. This is it, guys. One minute left. One minute. Presentation is part of the scoring. You know, that's my handicap. I have to rely on just cooking with passion and making the dish taste really good. Guys on the board, hands up. Chef Nick, you confident with this? Should be okay, I hope it's okay, I hope you like it. Chef David, you confident? Yes sir, yes sir. Now there's lots of flavor going on. I've added coconut, there's a sweet, there's a sour. There's crispy panchata to pay tribute to some of the pork that you have in your dish. There's the fish. And what I'm most proud of, I have not used any mixes, any instant tamarind. This is all natural, just like uh, mama would make. In the process of you making this, did this turn out to exactly how you wanted it to be? I'm actually quite proud of it. I think the flavors are bang on and it's rustic. It is exactly what I see Filipino cooking to be all about. Is it too uh, spicy for you? No, it's just right. Okay, because that was a bit of a concern as well. Now what I really love about this, it's that pork. That, yeah. that saltiness kind of tones everything. It balances yeah. it nice and a good cake, man. Chef, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm confident with my dish. Is it gonna be enough to beat Nick? I don't know. I have for you here a um, Thai influence, Korean influence, Japanese influence, Sinagang with uh, chopped che. On the bottom, we have a layer of the prawns, and then we have mung bean noodles. We have a layer of uh, kimchi after that, and then the uh, prawns again. And of course, we have a uh, cold version of this Sinagang. When you created this dish, was it clear in your head that you were gonna serve the broth cold? Yes, but if the weather is a tad cooler, I would do it hot. With this kind of weather, I think a cold broth is okay. Cold noodles work right now, man. It's, 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 it's hot. I got a little scared when I heard kimchi, but it's not that spicy, so it's good. When you do cold dishes, it's all about textures. It's all about the excitement, the roughness of the way this plate looks and the way this plate feels also contributes to the textures that you put into your dish. And for me, I find it heavily stimulating and I think it really works well. Thank you, Chef. Good job, chefs. Both of you did very well. We're just gonna excuse ourselves for a really quick deliberation and we'll get back to you. I'm really happy with what I did. I put my best foot forward. I took risk. This is what I wanna serve. I'm happy with it. Food is a very selfish thing almost. 
when it comes to taste. There's no right and wrong for this, but I'll still push out my best. Welcome, chefs. We have your results. I must say it was really tough. The judging was really intense. Chef Nick, we're going to start with you. Chef Bruce, go ahead. You know, Nick, I really love that you embraced the idea of how you were tasting the dish and how it really showed off when you were cooking. You used the aesthetic of the plate to echo the textures that you put into the noodle and with the watermelon, with the tempura, you really interpreted the dish in your own way. Unfortunately, in terms of embracing the idea of the sinigang, you ended up kind of floating around the sinigang than actually being the sinigang. And for that, I'm going to give you an eight. And Maureen? So Nick, I really love your presentation. It was very clean, aesthetically pleasing. I also love the twist of the kimchi. It gave that sour factor. But for me, it didn't really seem very Filipino. So all in all, I give you a seven. Thank you, Maureen. Chef Nick, as a chef, I appreciate all the technical skill that you put into your dish. From thinking about texture, technique, it was fantastic. And it was like watching an artist paint a canvas. But this competition really is about the essence of the Filipino dish. The Sinigang dish was a bit lacking. Chef Nick, I give you a 7 out of 10, which brings your total to 22. I do think it's a pretty good dish, okay? I mean, there are preferences, but I know my flavor profiles. Now for you, Chef David. David, you threw that grandmother card at us, and you know, you really made it difficult for yourself. Our expectation level now went from your cooking to you cooking for us with love. And we were really, really looking for that. Luckily, I think you were able to give that to us. You know, as a cook, I really loved the way the flavors came together. I wanted to run into the corner and squat and just keep slurping the soup and eat it like I would as a cook way after service. And because of that, I'm gonna give you an eight. Maureen? As a half European, I really like the European twist with the, like, the olive oil and the wine. We usually, as Filipinos, we don't really put coconut milk into sinigang, but actually all together it went really well and it tastes, it tastes really good. So to the presentation, you probably know yourself wasn't as nice as Nick's. It's like something I cook myself. And you could really see that it was a, like rush, but all in all, I give you an eight. Chef David, my expectations for you were very high, but the moment I saw you start cooking, you were just Hurricane David. And everything you did broke every rule in my head. I couldn't imagine putting coconut milk, pancetta with seafood, white wine in a sinigang. So I'm like, dude, what are you doing? What were you thinking? But brother, it really played out. Those last minute decisions that you made to add coconut milk, to add pancetta, at the very end, really saved you. Chef Nick, you have a total of 22 points. Chef David, you're at 16 points. You need seven points to win this leg of the competition. You need eight points to tie with Chef Nick overall. So for this, I give you Eight points, which means you have a total of 24 points. So you won the Filipino leg and you are now tied with Chef Nick for the overall competition. Good job. Oh baby, this is like a huge weight off my shoulders. I feel like there's redemption. They understood my cooking. They understood it's about flavor, taste that trumps everything. You guys are both tied with 68 points in the overall competition. I'm not going to stop with my cooking style and my approach, and I can't wait for that next city. Let's bring it on. This challenge just might cost me the whole competition. It's like starting from zip again. So, well, David, we're back at ground zero, so let's both bring our A game. 使用 WiFi 万能钥匙与霆锋一同守护 WiFi 安全。下载唱吧 APP， 听见歌声遇见你。Y House 城市精品生活指南，发现最时髦的美食和玩乐活动。下载下厨房 APP， 看菜谱学做菜，轻轻松松下厨房。I think this battle is going to be a close one.